Hey everybody, Brian Z, PGA Professional for Golf Intel. And in today's video, we're gonna show you the two ways to re-grip clubs, the old hard way and the newer, easier way. And I'm so fascinated by this and it's exciting because I like to change my grips a lot. I like to play around with the thickness of the grip. Your hands change, I'm a very big feel player. If you're a feel player, your hands are very, very important. What is on your clubs, how tacky it is, how thick it is, the texture of the grip is super, super important. And now with the second way that I'm gonna show you how to do these, you have so much more flexibility in being able to try different things and uh, different textures, not waste your money on ripping grips off. You can pull them off and reuse them as much as you want because this new way is awesome. Hey everybody, before we go too far, we really want you to be a subscriber to this channel. If you can do me a big favor, it helps the algorithm if you do all three of these things and gets our videos out there more. If you can hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you'll get a notification every time we release a new video, which there's gonna be a lot more coming. And then also, at the end of the video, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, make sure you comment on it. It really helps the algorithm understand that our videos are good and that you're seeing what you want. So if you could do all those three things for me, it would be really, really awesome and we would really appreciate it so let's get into it all right so as discussed we're gonna first show you the long and hard way to regrip a golf club so I've got an old golf club here this is the standard golf pride tour velvet grip that's uh, you know probably the most common grip I would say probably in the industry and what we normally will have to do is start to cut this off so the couple of tools that you're going to need in order to regrip the old way you're gonna need some tape you're gonna need double-sided tape and if you want to build the grip up in the thickness area, then you're going to need some build-up tape. You can use double-sided tape to build up as well. It's just a little bit more expensive to do it that way. This is just standard masking tape. You're going to need scissors. You're going to need a Sharpie. You're going to need something to grab the golf club shaft while it's in the vise. You're going to need some kind of a vise. I've got a tool here that I've had for <laughs> a few decades, I think, that is basically this thing in a quickened fashion. And you're going to need a blade. This is a hook blade. See that? That's specifically for grips. And optionally, you have a shaft tape remover. Now this one's getting really bad. I didn't realize how bad it was, but I'm gonna show you why I don't care <laughs> in, the, in the second part of the video that this is crappy because I'm probably never gonna use it again. So as we get into the grip removal process, we're gonna go ahead and put that, this thing is about, I don't know, on golf works, probably two or three bucks, maybe five bucks. And you put it in your vise and it'll hold the shaft without damaging it. It's made of rubber. So I highly suggest you get one of these. I would not regrip without it. So we're gonna go ahead and put this club in the vise and the club holder. Okay, so what we wanna do next is we wanna make sure that we get the grip off. Fairly easy process most of the time. Now, when you're doing an iron shaft or a steel shaft versus a graphite shaft, it is a little bit different. Very important to know that if you cut graphite, you weaken it. I have seen golf clubs break even up by the grip because somebody cut into that, weakened it, and eventually the graphite just snapped in half. Typically, you won't see a golf club break up by the grip. It's usually gonna be down by the hosel or the neck. And in this case, I've seen, because people take, take a knife, rip off the grip on a graphite club, you're scoring the graphite, it weakens everything, and in, in time, it will snap. So rule number one, graphite, do not take the blade and hit the graphite on your golf club. So usually people have graphite woods, maybe steel shafts in their irons. This is, you gotta take that with a grain of salt. We're working with a steel shaft here today, so it's a little bit different story. So you wanna make sure that you can get it started and go ahead and cut the grip down at the bottom, down where the grip is vulnerable. And you're just gonna start peeling back. Hopefully my, this is not my normal workshop, so I'm gonna make sure my vise is a little bit tighter here so it's nice and stable. And all we're gonna do is peel the grip back. You also wanna make sure that you're very careful if you're pulling the blade towards you that you don't slip and actually cut yourself. It's very important. The other thing you're gonna need is either a hair dryer or a heat gun. That can actually help you get some of the tape off and we'll show you when we get there. But we're gonna go ahead and remove this grip. Being careful, go nice and slow. Get it all the way off. And voila. So now we see we have tape. So one of the optional methods that you have is to use a tape scraper. So this would be something that we would go and, and go ahead and use this scraper like so and scrape the tape off. The other option that we have is to use our heat gun. I just have a little 
$20, looks like Warrior, something like that. It doesn't matter. Any hair dryer is probably gonna be fine. We'll go ahead and heat the tape up a little bit. And all this does is really kind of break down the glue that's on the tape and that's been on the club. The older the tape, the older the club, the easier it's gonna come off. So if it's a newer club, it's probably gonna be a little bit tougher to get the tape off without heating it. But the, you're not trying to set it on fire, you're not trying to melt it, it's just to warm it up a little bit. And you can even use your fingers if you don't have a scraper. What you're also gonna need is some grip solvent or mineral spirits will just work fine, paint thinner, and some double-sided grip tape, again, to do this the old way, and you're gonna need a towel. So one of the things that we do when we're regripping is we gotta make sure that this grip is never going to slip. Woo future casting. And one of the things that we do to ensure that is we're gonna take our mineral spirits or grip solvent that I've got here. We're gonna put a little bit on the, on the towel and we wanna make sure that this shaft is clean. Yes, always make sure your shaft is clean. And we're going to go ahead and use this solvent to get all the extra glue off of there. So it should be absolutely perfect. There should be nothing on that shaft just nice clean steel and that solvent will let it come off really really quickly so now that we've got a nice clean steel shaft we can start to use our grip tape so what you're going to want to do is you want to take your grip that you're going to be using and you want to go ahead and mark the club so we want to make sure that when we put this tape on that we don't have tape sticking out the bottom of the grip we want it to be underneath the grip if you have tape sticking out the bottom of your grip, everybody will know that you suck at golf and you, we don't want you to be like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this marker, Sharpie marker. Now when you put the grip on, there's a, what's called a cap at the back of the club. It's about a quarter to a half an inch and that's the limit that this shaft will, uh, the grip will go on. So we wanna mark it just inside of the end of the grip, probably about a half an inch or so. And we're going to use that as our measuring spot for our tape. We put the grip down. We're gonna go ahead and start our tape at the mark that we just made. Now here's a very, very important tip. When you're putting the tape on, we're gonna use scissors. Go ahead and leave a little bit extra at the end and we're gonna clip it nice and clean. Now what we wanna do is make sure, I've seen so many people make this mistake, is they just go ahead and grab the tape and smooth it out, which puts a ton of wrinkles in it. And if you have just one layer of tape that you're using and you have wrinkles in it and a you know, thinner type grip without a lot of texture to it, you're gonna feel the wrinkles in the tape and you don't want that. Again, that's kind of a hack move. We don't want you to be a hack. We want you to have professionally done grips done by yourself. And we're gonna go ahead and wrap this to make sure there's no wrinkles in it. The double-sided grip tape is a lot easier to make sure you don't have wrinkles in it than masking tape. And if we wanted to do any type of a buildup, we would have put masking tape first. So if you like a little bit thicker grip, you're gonna repeat this same process before putting on the double-sided tape. The double-sided tape is the last layer that you put on, and we're gonna go ahead and finish that off. We're gonna remove the top layer of double-sided tape. Actually, I should have done that first. This was a mistake. There we go. That was a complete mistake. You really gonna wanna remove that double-sided before you wrap it all the way around. Take the butt end, and we're just gonna shove it down the opening in the shaft there to make sure no dirt or anything gets in there and we're ready to go. One thing you also wanna do is make sure that club is aligned perfectly in the vise so we can get that grip on there nice and square. Okay, so we're going to finish this off in the garage because it's a mess and that's the whole point of this video is this is the way I used to do it and I don't like doing it anymore, but we're gonna take some solution this is our grip solvent. Again, mineral spirits can be done. Here's your grip. You're just going to pour some of the solution into the grip. There are non-messier ways to do this than what I'm doing. We wanna make sure we get a lot of the solution all over the grip and the tape. If there's not enough in there, like that's not enough, we're gonna go ahead and pour some solution onto the tape. Make sure it's very, very wet. We just slide the grip on, starting with this end, and don't stop. You're just going to slide and don't stop. Get it all the way on there. What you don't wanna do also is stretch the grip out, that thins it out and makes your grips very inconsistent. So we wanna make sure that it's a comfortable position, just like so, not stretched. Make sure that the butt of the club is all the way to the end. And then we're going to dry it off with a towel. Looking nice. You can go ahead and line it up while it's still wet. You can make sure that your, your grip is lined up with your head. 
and your leading edge of your golf club. And then we're going to tap it on the ground. Make sure it's all the way to the butt end of the club. We're gonna line it up, make sure we are nice and square. And that is it. So you've probably got about 20, 30 minutes at least in order to get this thing to be dry enough to go play with. And again, if you did something wrong and it dries, you have to rip it off unless you have a needle system, which is an absolute bigger mess. And my hands stink. I gotta go wash them off. They're gonna be really dry and flaky probably for the rest of the day. And this is kind of the old school way. I've done like a million grips this way, but we're gonna show you the better way. All right, so in order to do method number two of regripping using the compressed air, we have to use the right grip. This is the thing that's driving me crazy about everybody that I see talking about using air to put their grips on without tape. Well, you cannot use a standardized grip or it will twist over time. Usually grips are gonna have some type of an alignment mark on the top, on the bottom. Sometimes there's a reminder down the back which is just a little bit of a rib to kind of get your hands in the same place every time. If those start to twist, one degree, half a degree of your club face open or closed makes a difference. Now the golf club isn't ever going to tell you that's what went wrong, but I've seen people do that. Here's a crazy story. When I was young, I was really young, I was just getting started doing grips. I had a member come to me and he goes, hey, I think something's wrong with my grips. The grip was sliding off. It was like, there was like three inches of grip that's just like flopping all around. And I was like, whoa, yeah, you got a problem with your grips. Who put these on? He's like, oh, my brother did it. I'm like, oh, your brother did it, great. So took it in, pulled off the grip, and what he had done is he put the double-sided tape on and didn't take the top layer off. So the double-sided tape was not double-sided tape, it was just a layer of tape. And the grip was completely sliding off, and I don't even know how the guy played with him, but he did. And I was like, holy cow, don't let your brother do your grips anymore. So anyway, I digress. The key to this is that there are two grip companies that are out there that I know of that are using a special compound in their grip. I believe it's more rubber that's in the grip that will allow the grip to adhere to either the shaft or masking tape. They specifically say, do not use double-sided tape. It's not good for the type of rubber or the amount of rubber they put in their grips. But their grips are designed to stay on the club and not twist just using the compressed air without any tape or fluid. Those two grip companies are Pure Grips and Star Grips. And I'll put links in the description below where you can go check it out. We may or may not sell them on our website, not sure. I like both grips. They both come in a lot of different textures, not as much as you'd see with like a Golf Pride or a Lampkin, something like that, but a lot of different textures and a heck of a lot of colors. And the Pure Grip company even lets you customize this part of the grip. So you can put logos and colors and you can you can change the paint fill color you can do all kinds of crazy stuff and it's really a pretty cool idea so the two different grips i've got them both this is a star grip and i like like a tour velvet type of feel and it's super tacky and this is the pure grip same style of grip i wanted to make sure i compared the two so i've got the pure grip right here and you probably can't tell yeah you're not gonna be able to see with the naked eye but the left hand uh as i grip or the top half of the club is a little bit thicker with a pure grip than it is a star grip. I kind of like the thinner feeling of the star grip, not gonna lie, but both grips are good. They're both about the same price. Pure is a little bit more expensive, but both specifically designed to be on the club, will not slip, no tape, no fluid. So I would never put use compressed air to put a grip on that's a Golf Pride or a Lampkin or a Win or something like that and just let it go because that thing is gonna twist over time and even just a little bit here and there is gonna throw your grip out of alignment. I would never do it and I suggest that you don't either because you're gonna be a better player. And here's what we're gonna do. The coolest thing about the compressed air is actually taking a grip off. Here's a bunch of pure grips. I've got a lot of different textures. Hopefully you can see that. It almost looks like concrete. And then they have a perforated wrap. They have another one that's part texturized. And this one's kind of cool. It's like a, like a tour velvet on the bottom half that's actually a little bit thicker in the grip. So your right hand's a little bit thicker. And then you have like the textured side at the top. So two different textures. So they are expanding their grip offerings. I'm not sure which one I like. I'm kind of traditional tour velvet kind of guy, but I'll tell you what, I'm not playing tour velvets ever again. These are better grips. So here's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna start using the compressed air instead of messy fluid and tape. Ooh. Hey guys, don't forget, if you're liking this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click subscribe and the bell notification so you see the videos when we come out. It really helps our channel grow. We appreciate it very much. We want you to be a subscriber. Do it!
So I'm just using this compressor here that I've got. It's an older one, not too old, 150 PSI, but you do not need 150 PSI. I think the companies say you need at least 60 PSI. So almost anything will work. The more the merrier, but this is what I'm using for today. And this is the gun. This is the really cool gun that came from Star Grips. Very cool, that adapter at the end is extremely important. We'll show you how that's being used. That's it. The grip is done. How cool is that? This grip is completely done. I don't have to wait for this thing to dry. It is ready to go. It is stiff on that club shaft. It is not going anywhere. I don't have to wait for it to dry. I don't have to pound it. I don't have to have fluid leaking out the back, nothing. I am ready to go. And these grips feel great and such an easier way to do it, but you gotta use the right grip. So when I go to blow the grip off, all I'm doing is getting that little nipple piece into the butt of the club. And we're just gonna give it a little bit of a tug. It's naturally gonna wanna come backwards and it's just short little bursts pss, 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 of air and that thing will come right off. Ready? Done. That thing is off and I can use this grip wherever and whenever I want. I don't have to cut it off. Awesome. So when we're putting it on, all we're trying to do is get, get it started just a little bit here. And if you hear my compressor kick on, you won't be able to hear my voice. So hopefully that doesn't happen. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we don't have the gun up here. We don't have it down here. We're going straight and we're going to take our other hand and guide it along because it's going to naturally want to go this way. We need to force it just a tad that way, short little bursts, and we're going to push with the gun. You're going to push the gun straight in and with your hand going that way and short little bursts. Get it started. The first part's the toughest, making sure that top part doesn't roll. We just fix it if it does. Okay, my compressor is done. Look at that, it's on there perfectly. There is no tape, there is no fluid, there is no mess. I don't have to wait for it to dry. I can go play with this right now and it's not going anywhere. And knowing that this is the right grip that is not going to twist around because I was not smart and used air and tape and fluid, which is air and tape and fluid, like you could spray that in your face. Like, ew. so we don't want to do that. This is the best way to go, I'm telling you, but you got to use the right grips, either pure grips or star grips. And here's the other thing. So the standard warranty, we'll call it with Golf Pride, I believe is about 25 rounds. That's what they say on their site, I do believe. The Pure Grips warranty is 100 rounds. The Star Grips warranty is 300 rounds. You know how long it takes to play 300 rounds? I play about 50 a year, and that's a lot of years. And if it wears out or whatever, you just send it back. So that right there, add up the cost and the convenience and all of those factors, these are the best way to go, believe me. 100 rounds and 300 rounds versus Golf Pride's 25. I believe they last longer than that, but they do lose their tackiness. Some people use them forever, which they should not. It's like, why would you drive around on bald tires? Don't do it. Don't do it in your golf game either. And that's a crazy warrant, crazy warrant. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna rip through the rest of my set. We're just gonna start blowing grips off, putting them on. Watch this. One grip off. Done. Next. I bet I could re-grip a whole set in 10 minutes. We'll go ahead and build, build up a little bit. I like two layers of masking tape on this. I always want to make sure that that tape isn't going to be on an angle. So you want to have, when you do this, you want to have, make sure you have the same amount of tape on this side and that side, that it's even all the way up and down. So if you have it on an angle, then you're going to probably run into some a bigger chance of having wrinkles and you don't want that. I try to not to make the seam of the tape exactly on top of each other. So I, Change that just a little bit. As as we can get it. This, the masking tape has a little bit more tendency to wrinkle, but we're fine. We're having a good time. 
started. Done. Literally, how long was that? Was that a, a full 30 seconds or what? So cool. I'm so excited about this. I'm gonna change my grips like every week. I wanna make sure we give it a little squeeze, make sure there's no air bubbles in there as well. Perfect. So fun. Love doing this, this fast. Watch this, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Done. New grip. Getting faster as we go here, folks. All done, full set of irons, done. What was that? If I wasn't talking and recording, that'd have been like seriously 10 minutes. It's kind of disappointing that their warranty on these are so long because I want to change them all the time now, but they're probably going to last me forever. So, you know, what are you going to do? Hey guys, so that's it. That's the two different ways to re-grip your clubs moving forward. I hope you can see that using the air gun is like a hundred times easier and gives you so much more flexibility and your grips are going to last longer and there's just nothing bad about it. So I'm convinced I am done with the old way. I am on to the new way. You should do the same thing for your game. And until next time, Brian Z signing off. Time to go play a little golf in the simulator with my new grips. See ya.